Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome. It's Art Stream Day. So, we're just going to pop in and get started real quick, and it'll be great. So, we're working on one of my characters today. Her, her name, her, she, they, she, they, uh, is Kurota, and a uh, big fluffy dragon hybrid being woman specifically. So I'm going to be inking and coloring this part and then designing outfits. So let's get started, shall we? Um, uh, where to start with Kurota? Uh, um, Not necessarily one of my older characters. Uh, in fact, I... Uh, she's an adopt that I got from a, an artist that I'd really wanted something from for a while. Uh, now that I have something from them, I, I no longer feel the intense drive that I did at one point, which amuses me greatly. Because it's like that for all the artists that I really like. It's... <laughs> Once I have something from you, I'm good. The the itch is sated. I'm I'm fine. Uh but in this case she's a lady knight as well, which I am greatly amused by. Greatly not amused, but like appreciative of I struggle when I design female characters at least or I did to design female characters that I felt were powerful I wanted to but I just struggled with it struggled with finding a reason for it I'm doing a lot better now when I'm designing characters like that, but this wasn't too very long ago, so uh it helps to just sort of have a grasp on what the character is like. Or how you want them to be. Is what I found. That helped me. With this particular character. That came with a blurb of information. Like. Major minor story beats. That you could use for the character if you wanted to. Um. So I used some of that to build the character up more without compromising what I wanted, which was a protector. I love me a good protector character, and I think I always will. So... That's why most of my characters have that tendency to be protective. This is also the same character that I've spoken of in the past in regards to uh, the most expensive adopt that I've ever bought. Yeah, that this would be her. And I can pull up the actual design, I think. I'm using a mix of the original design and what I decided to change because... 
that's the kind of person I am. I gotta make a character my own. I gotta. It's the law. Or at least that's what I feel with the characters, especially that you, you adopt or you buy the designs for. You gotta find a way to make them your own, otherwise it's just sort of blank slating it and well, that can be fun. You're always just going to sort of, at least in my case, this is how I feel about it, that you're going to... They're not necessarily going to be yours. You're just still following the design that you bought. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just personally... think that if you want to take the time to make it a character that's that's yours you need to put something of yourself into it which can be more difficult than others especially for some characters and especially for some artists uh, in this case that's what i was struggling with for this particular for this particular being my aetherling which is a closed species by alchemistry on deviantart is that I didn't know how to, for the longest time, I didn't know how to um, have this character read as a character that I would work with. I didn't, I didn't know where my lines were, <laughs> both literally and figuratively, I guess. where characterization mattered to me and what 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 mattered to me character wise this particular artist has uh quite a few different types of closed species including uh, mermaid ones that are coming out because they did an advent recently. But goodness, uh, there we are. There's the lines that I was looking for. But in that sense, it's something important that I figured out with this particular character is that it's hard for me to even build up the uh, desire to draw characters if I don't have an emotional connection to them. This character is still hard for me to want to draw because they're very complex and I... I appreciate that about them, but at the same time, uh, the complexities, mostly in just how fluffy they are, but I also at the same time have moments when I just want to draw fluffy hair, so it's fairly easy to see that 
I greatly appreciate the character on top of all of the minor things. Uh, this one looks more correct. This one. This foot looks more correct than the other one. And I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. I think that makes it fit better. That's too big. So, because I'm always curious about this type of thing, at least in the sense of do other people struggle with the same thing? They probably do, but you can't really, like, Hmm. Not really sure how to word it, but I also know that I enjoy just the act of supporting artists. So that's why I buy adopts sometimes because I like the designs and I want to support the artist. Which is kind of me, but I gotta support me as an artist first. Otherwise, how am I supposed to support anybody else? But that can be hard, especially when you see something that's, like, very your aesthetic. Or from an artist that you've followed for a long time. And you've wanted to get something for forever. All sorts of things can lead to the decay of one's... willpower in that regard. But let's see. Uh, I've talked a little bit about where Kuroto came from. Yeah. So Kurota, if you are trying to actively see the original art from like Deviant Art or Toy House, then uh, you'll find technically art for both under Kurota as her name, but The original artist, Alchemistry, and the advent that she came from was for the Faded Stroke of Midnight. That was the title that she had in that particular set, because she's the, the clock, in essence, for the Nutcracker play that's going on. Which I think is very interesting, especially since I believe I decided the essence on her, which, hey, it's Coop! 
Nice to see you. I, I honestly didn't think you were going to be able to come in this early. It's part of the reason why I didn't start the Minecraft stream yesterday this early. Big fluffy dragon lady. That is what I am drawing today. That is what I am drawing right now. I'm glad you could at least show up too. I like it when, when my friends can party with me, I guess is the best term. Uh, let's see. We gotta do here's so we're just gonna go here and we're gonna across so that I can find where's the best part to do this room because that way isn't the way that I want to do those. Uh, yes, uh, etherlings, 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 uh, I was doing a little lore dump, from what I know, on these closed species entities, I don't like the way that looks, that's, that's bad. This one I like, so we'll do this one. Uh, basically, fluffy crystal dragons that represent a A something they they choose an essence basically and that's what they consist off of what they live on it's like food for them and I believe Kuroto's was dreams but not in like sleeping dreams but like what drives you to move forward type of dreams and that's just if I'm remembering the distinctions that I was trying to make clearly. But yes. Uh. She's, uh, one of those. That's what she is. <laughs> uh, I've shown, I believe, colors for her once. She's, she's this. When I'm done with her, basically, I'm going to be designing outfits, but I also have, let's see, let's see, I will show you guys the original. Yeah. Because she's in here. I've drawn her a lot, but. Let's see. So that you can see the the dragoniness of her. That's the original artist, which is Alchemistry on Deviant Art, and Dragon Form Kurota. It's big old fluff with the night nice sky portrayals and. You can see why why I would get that. That's very a thing that I enjoy. So it took me a while to actively get behind Kurota. Not not design wise, but because 
and still a little bit because I don't necessarily know what the world lore is. If I'm being honest, I know a little bit because they have the the artist Alchemistry has a website that they made. For their aether verse where they've got a uh, cybernetic rat people and uh, rabbits versus birds and mermaids that ride space noodle dragons on top of these guys which are the aetherlings which uh Basically, think cat dragon. Fluffy cat like dragonoid entities is what I've seen them described as. That and ferrets. They have elemental affinities. They've got gods and demons and other stuff. Uh, but yes. Kurota is my 1500 dollar child who's not making life easy for me today. <laughs> Because it's not sharp enough. That's too sharp. Still not right. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's not turning out right. So I'm just going to steal this. Steal my own work. If something's not working, just, just, just steal from yourself. In reality, that's all art is, is theft. You steal things you like, you add them to your own stuff, you forget you stole it. That's much better. I appreciate that much better. This line is now incorrect, but easy to fix. Yes. Okay. And I put some of the wings in the wrong places when I went and looked back at the creature just in this particular reference, but Easy enough to fix. I've also added my own embellishments because... Because. <laughs> uh, right. We go back down here. We do... Basically... What we can for the wings. Which... This was an effort to simplify them, basically. It was actually an idea that popped into my head that I really enjoyed the look of, the strange sort of hyper-simplified shape. It was very fun to do, and so I'm probably going to keep it. Uh, as for more info about Kurota, uh, when I got her, 
technically them as well because they're that they're who they are. Um, I thank you. I'm I'm liking how this is turning out so far. It's... Okay, now we got that back there, which is good. Because then I can do what I want to do with this, which is up. Pretty dang close to the top, but not to the top there. So I can make that bottom part down here shorter. Uh, but yes, Kuroto was champion of one of their one of the. Uh, The Seven Sisters? Seven Six? I, I don't necessarily remember off the top of my head. But, got a basically goddess of darkness and mysteries and stuff. And Kurota is champion. The champion in that regard. A champion, which... I didn't really know how to work because I was struggling at the time to make uh, strong and powerful female characters. Uh, I was trying to avoid, I guess is the best way to determine that, making characters, female characters, physically powerful. Because I didn't understand how it worked in my head yet. Obviously, I've gotten over that. But that was a thing that did happen. That was a thing that I did. Struggled with. Now I don't. And it's great. But, yes. Let's see, is that on the stainless straight line? Yes. But it needs to go from the tip there. Yeah. Uh, where was I? I was talking about something and now I've lost my train of thought completely. See. Oh, yeah, that's better. There we go. Very nice. Um Oh, 
Oh yeah, for those who weren't here yesterday, I started playing Minecraft. For the very first time ever. I'm very excited about it. Looking forward to continuing to build what whatever the heck I'm deciding to do at the moment. Which seems to me like I might be doing some sort of um, underground inn. So if you like that sort of thing, Come join me on Saturdays. I'm gonna do my best. Now let's see, because there's obviously a way to do this correctly without putting a dot on my canvas. Come on now. Because that's technically correct from a physiological standpoint. These, the way these fan. So it's basically this bottom line that needs to go away now to, to show off individual feathers. But I don't know. How I want to do that, or even if I want to do that, I'm sort of thinking about using these as um, see, because that's a little bit too long, they need to be at the same sort of. down here, but I need them to be more pointy. Because that's But even that doesn't look right, even though I definitely find it interesting the way this kind of reminds me of like a curtain on a theater right here because of the the basis, which was it was the nutcracker ballet that this whole like adopt group was based off of which i think is an interesting thing uh, i mean the nutcracker prince himself was a giant toy monster which was interesting the uh the characters are very fun. The the artist who designs these has a fun eye, in my opinion, for shapes and stuff, so... It's 
since I'm trying to make a, this is basically me trying to make a base shape so that I can not waste any time and just really draw on top of it for outfit designs purposes. There's only a little like drive to make the back part of this because I don't know if I'm going to be like designing draping fabric or whatever. I probably will because I have a tendency to do that. I enjoy that, that sort of shape. But Like, my goal is to basically make this style of design choices throughout the back of it because I want. may just be that I need to put a point further here, which would not surprise me. Wings on birds are fascinating, if just for the complexities they have. Like this is not one feather, but like two. And I still need some some choices in here, but like if I get rid of these ones, do I feel better? Like if I because I still liked that theatrical look, but um. I don't want to spend like eight eight hours on a single single design choice here. But I'm probably gonna be going for a while just so that I can get interesting, interesting, interesting. There's definitely good energy there, but I need to make like these lines straighter. That's like it's good stuff. But yes, I was saying uh, Kurota is a champion and has the ability to bind people to contracts so that they achieve their dreams, which, you know, feels like there would be a reason for it. And feather imagery always makes me think of, like, quills and stuff. So I wanted the feathers to be pretty. I also just want to let people who are watching this know that when I got it, I did not know what the design would look like. That I got it only really knowing the aesthetics of it. No, that's not right. That's more right, but uh. 
I'm missing a way to design this somehow. The thought process is not not going on it. I think those two lines can stay. I think I just need to redo this whole section. Because I didn't line it up the way I wanted to in the first part. That one line can stay. It should be as easy as the other one was, which was just drawing lines through it. But it could just be that I'm. Struggling with it because details. Now, see, now that there's a definitive point here, I can do what I did before. And it'll be just fine. It's just I didn't make the the shape I needed to make it the first part, it seems. But one part over here. Feathers naturally can do that anyway, and that's a nice shape. That is a nice shape. I appreciate that shape a lot. And that's good for me because basically all the other wings are the same as that but smaller. To which I bet you're asking yourself, hey, if they're just that but smaller, then why didn't you just... Get there a little bit further down on the base of the tail, got it. Then why didn't you just... <laughs> so I need to duplicate this one, this whole thing, because the wing is where I got it. to sit. You can't expand it twice, but this helps me to keep track of where things are, like tail. But now I have the last set of wings. Which, if you were paying attention, I gave little penance to. So 
they they're further down, but I wanted to give penance to them so that there was more so that the tale was even more distracting than it already is. <laughs> Basically. I'm just going to make these lines darker. There we go. I like how they're like nesting wings at the minute. Now we take my free hand and we take the entirety of the wing and we copy and paste because I want that and we can turn this off in essence I need this one on so that I know how far I need to move this which would be to about here That's about the size that I want to take it to. This little here version of it. Yeah. Three, or you go to all of that. Duplicate this again. And we just sort of offset it a little bit. Maybe we'll even tilt it a little bit more so that you get the depth of it. Take these last feather down here because, like I said, I'm doing penance, which it's like the, the word for flag. Even on birds, it's called that, even when it's a naturally occurring thing, I believe that's what they're termed. I specifically wanted to make them, like, star-shaped down here at the bottom, so that it added to the sort of wishing star vibes that we had going. But I'm going to just go ahead and outline this, because I want to make sure that this... ...line, at least, works the way it's supposed to. Let me see, come on, come on. I drew these lines. Why is it so difficult to draw on top of them? 
Uh. But yeah. I'll probably add some sort of like feathering here. Just because it kind of looks empty without it. I'll even turn on the big layer and do that here too, just because. I want to keep that because I like it. It helps define things a little bit better. Yes. Okay. Now, now we duplicate this and take it and we line it to there and we turn it. And we just sort of line it up. Like that one. So I can delete that one. And get that one and root it. Come over here and clean this up so that it's more physiologically accurate then we can fuse those together so that they're a set and we go back here I want to add Yeah, like that. That's good. Yeah. And then just make sure that your lines all seal up. Good. Good, 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 good. Now, I did all those wings for a reason. The reason is uh, because I needed to know where they were so that I could design outfits around them, which is important for at least this particular species, in my opinion. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the hair. Which is a constant source of struggle for me at the beginning. Because I love drawing fluffy hair. But to get the direction correctly I needed a whole like drawing sheet
of trying to figure out how the hair worked, in my opinion. This is my favorite way it's turned out so far. So, I'll explain, in essence, what I've done. Uh, Rota, his hair is wavy. That's just how it's always sort of looked to me. And while on both forms, in fact, um, I'll point out where I found that in the, the dragon one that I still have in here. In a second. But to me, Hiroja's hair is wavy. Has always been wavy and probably will always be wavy. But in this case, it's also two-toned, because I, initially I got the character and they had short hair, which might be better for a knight, in all honesty, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted strong enough to not need to worry about that energy. And so I did that. <laughs> I, it initially was a drawing of uh, Kurota with longer hair because I wanted to see if that that felt good. Uh, it did. And I ended up going with it I forgot that this was on this layer. Because they already had these uh, longer hair hair doodads, yeah, hair doodads. I didn't even think twice about it. I just went long hair all over the place instead of just in one area. And by doing that, I didn't need any of that uh, because uh, that would just cover up the skin and stuff that I'm planning on drawing here in a second, or rather coloring. But, uh, I've lost my train of thought completely, but it matters not. All I'm just going to do is keep drawing.
in essence, yes, I drew this character with long hair because they had the long long doodads, these things, and their initial humanoid design that I felt needed to stay. Right here on top. But I also wanted them to have a lot of hair. Because it's more fun to have BC characters that are extremely fluffy, in my opinion. They need to always Be this fluffy. I put this on a different layer than the white hair so that I didn't have to worry about Uh, what's the word? Um, brain. Don't stutter out on me now. And that's just to close off the loop. So here you can see the entire mess of lines that this has become. I'm planning on turning off the background layer, and we're going to start with this part, because it's the easiest. How is this part the easiest? Well, this is how this part's the easiest. This part of Kurota's hair is white. The top half of her two-tone hair is white. Uh, this part is the second easiest. I do need to just go ahead and grab the black. Alright. Oof. Start on this layer. And then fill it in. And you got the basic two tones. Now you could do uh, something like oh, wrong one. I'm on the wrong layer. Like this to show the the balance between the two but these ones aren't aren't ones that need to be like changed all the time so they can be squished together now can turn off the wings for now and this this doodle layer that I did we don't need it anymore but we're going to this layer, and I have a break somewhere, oh, I saw that, I saw that while I was doing this one, I knew this was there, but I didn't fix it, Yes, there we go. Now this is the part where you got to be 
color picking. And why I'm working so hard to make sure all the layers are closed. Because, like I said, this is a base, baseline for the character. And it's important to me to do this right. Um, now... All right, have a good time wherever you're going, Coop. There's the break, there's the break. How is that not, uh, already fixed, anyway. Where was I? Right. I'm getting all the fluffy parts, basically. Grab as many of these as I get on her. So that I can start by... That is the start color. That one. Yep, there we go. Cause I need I need this to to be like this. There's some things that I do need to change, obviously. Like the color of the claws and what have you. And there's some details that I need to add, like the eyes. <laughs> but those are easy enough to do properly. And I didn't like the expression that I had here initially, so we're going to go ahead and get that. But, uh, wings. Come on. Thinking line to close that. Thinking line to close that. Invert that. Come on. There we go. We're just going to go ahead and do that for all of them because if I don't, then I'm going to forget and I don't want to forget, so. Mm 
And this also just sort of shows you how dang big the wingspan is and just how messy it can be to have like so many wings at the same time. But there, now we don't have the lines in the background so you can sort of see just the, uh, the energy, the energy that exists here. Just showing how much stuff there is, which is cool. Especially because she's a dragon. Um, let's see. Now, we got the darker colors. I think I'll do the darker colors next. There's this brush, which is what I've done in the past to get those effects, which is fun. So, uh, because in this case, I see them mostly at the edges of the wings. I'll actually turn off. These two so that I can see what I'm doing with my lines. Otherwise, I won't be able to. I should also turn off this one so that I can see. Did you? <coughs> ah. That's me. like that that's a good basically what I do with these is I just make the colors look nice so that every time I draw Kurota the night sky on them isn't the same as it was the last time I drew it and I do that for fun for fun's sake I can shrink my brush size down a little bit. And I don't want it to look the same across all of them. So I just sort of don't do that. I, I gotta be more careful with this one because they're not as separate. As these other ones have been. So yeah. But that's not the only place that, that happens to. It happens in the body as well on all the places which I think is fun especially if we're going to go with Darkening the limbs, which I like. I forgot to grab something. Yeah, I'm not doing it on this one. I gotta go back all the way to the beginning anyway. Always make sure you get all of your 
spaces that you can get. And also always make sure to... I mean, two things. I need one for just this being fully filled in. Just so that I can grab this whole section. And not worry about it. At a different time. And then a layer for above this. Where it's my cloud layer. To make my life easier. I just need not this one, not this one, just need the smaller set of wings. I didn't grab the one under there, which is Yeah, because I'm trying to keep some of these things separate. In this case, I don't necessarily want too much of this up near the top, maybe like But I like the the darker part being near the bottom. I enjoy that. It lets me have at least some sort of understood pattern. Which amuses me. All right. <sighs> uh. Yeah. Uh. So that I can turn those on and off as need be. Same for these, because right now, these help define the shape, the color language that I'm using, the shape and color language that I'm using. All right. Um, Let's see. Pick a spot. And you got two variants of this blue here. I start with the slightly darker one. And we go up here.
And then this lighter one is definitely lighter. And you get this sort of mottled look, which I appreciate. And so we'll go into like, like this space. And, oop. You know, I want to see if that works. And you you do the same for these. Add that sort of faded one, and you add that brighter one. And it, it's brighter compared to the other wings you've done. And so we get something like that, and it's still difficult to discern where one thing ends and another begins, but I like that. I like the way that looks. Now, this was the original design. I've since taken liberties with specifically those brown, those brown, uh, gosh, I thought they looked like, um, those compass lines, their map markers, in a sense. So, where those appear, I, I did some, some changes to them, how I see them. So that means it's time to start with those. Um, this will this will be where we start. Okay. <laughs> uh.
and yeah um So that's sort of how we're going to get this to turn out. And it's going to end up sort of looking like these ones, but you know, more orderly, I hope. Because those got kind of messy. And I haven't even gotten to the stars part yet, which is definitely something that I look forward to. I enjoy the sparkly aspect. Um... I'm just thinking on my feet here. Because I thought by now I would be done, but then I, I realized I vastly overestimated how easy this character is to... create like the design for from scratch like I had forgotten I always forget how long it takes to draw them until I'm drawing them again and realize that oh gosh this is once again an incredibly long time it's not a bad thing. It's just a thing that I always forget about. <clears throat> Let's just get rid of all of the Yeah, all of those. Yes, better. Of course, this one's a little bit more difficult. And it's sort of, this one is one of those ones that I'm happy with because it shows more of the curvatures that I'm, I was trying to, to do because it 
I want it to seem like it changes. That was my goal. I wanted to make it seem like it changed. Like... Like the night sky would move. And... these star map lines would remain in the same ish places. Now the big wings are an exception instead of just a simple band and one of those. They have a whole like collection that I gotta do. They not only have the singular band but they also uh, hair's in the way for me. It's hard to see on this one, but it's easy to see here. If you follow the band, they got two lines that chase each other before the regular band. I simplified it for this to sort of keep it in line with everything else, but every time I do it, it's just subtly different. So in this case, I think it's the top of this bone that comes down. this and that's that's one line of it Oop, knocked it over my shield and the bar is usually down here So that leaves space for this other one that I was thinking about. Probably come out of the same space. In this case, it would look like that. For this. <clears throat> It's also much thinner than the initial band, and therefore Peter's out before it does, but yeah, something like that, but then these aren't right, so let's fix those. Yeah, like those, and then you can put your point here. No, that's not correct. It would go here. So stuff like this would then be added to it. Mm. 
Mm, I'll just put it there. We'll do this. That. And this. So that it still reads as a radial. And then... Let's see. Uh... Well... I honestly don't know. There's a whole lot to this character and the world that they inhabit that I'm not really aware of, mainly because those species worlds tend to be like that. Just sort of mysterious to everybody but the creator. I know that at the moment She's working as a fortune teller in Traveling Circus, where she's keeping watch over an entity from the void, I believe. In this case, it's just a swarm of rats. <laughs> hungry, hungry rats. Because that's just sort of the theme of the, the overarching... story. So. Ta-da! We got the lines, which definitely help. Since I've got them all layered properly. Showing you where the wings and the, the limbs differentiate themselves. Now... We'll just go ahead and... I think I'll try and get that from the actual art. Is it was always this nice goldeny color to me and not the the mustardy yellow that I got. Let's see. So We'll go ahead and group those together, just to make my life easier. And turn that off, because I have face to do. Okay. If it's not a good ellipse. Ugh. I'm not getting that shape right. It's this little half moon shape that I'm trying to get.
I can work with this. I can work with this. I can make this a nice one. All right, so I thought I could, let's see. This is, this is where it gets a little bit difficult for me. Cause I want these shapes to be nice. Because these are the, the crystal shapes that exist. Okay. I like that. And now... We've got those three. Two stars and a diamond on arm. Two star, two diamonds and a star on the leg. And then we just add more to the tail. Specifically a couple of diamonds by this set of wings. Where we color the nails. Okay. Two stars. And a diamond. No. Definitely this star here. And a diamond, although it's a triangle, really, there. But it's important. Um, yes. There. And then we go down here and we do two diamonds. And a star. The crystal settings, the crystals on the aetherlings, I don't believe they have to be in any particular places or be any particular size. So I'm just sort of putting them wherever I want to.
which is which is fun. Let's see. Uh, yeah, this wasn't necessarily what I was trying to do, but I like this just as well. We don't need to worry about anything in particular with that. Now that those are like that, I'm good. Uh, stars, right? Stars. Oh, no, face. I was doing the face. I got, I got a little bit confused. I like giving Kurota eyelashes, uh, big eyelashes, lots and lots of eyelashes. I enjoy that as part of the facial structure for her. Of course, it helps that her hair is two-tone and that I can I can use that to give her those types of eyelashes. Those. Mm. Looks like I just need to do this and that and then just sort of because I don't want to necessarily do what I've done with her in the past which is just let the anime hair rules rule but I also don't want the eyelashes to get lost when they're in front of stuff so like that that works for me Now, Garota's eyes are fun because they're dark outside, lighter inside, even lighter design wise. So I just am going to. Get these eyes on the prize. Uh. 
And we'll see. Yeah. Beautiful. And now we've got the eyes done. And I'm going to set this to multiply so that I can get Let's see. I've been enjoying that. So you can see in this one I tried giving her freckles. I don't like that now, but I liked it at the time, which was cool. But now I'm not into that. So... They're looking for this blue. Because that's going to help us define more of the fingers and the toes. Wait a second, I want to do... Nope, okay, got it. Just wondering if it would work or if it wouldn't, so... The answer is no, it doesn't. And then we'll have to go back to the the crystals worksheet or layer because there are more crystals that I didn't draw just then. With this one, I don't have to worry about the lines so much, but with the hand, I do. So we're going to just go ahead and automatic it. So that I can... Add little paw pads to the fingers. And to the toes. But that'll help define where the hands are. Which is why I do it this way. I'm 
Now with these ones, it's fun because you get a line that goes up the calf like this. I personally enjoy this part of the process because this is where you get to decide where your designs, where your design choices go. And how much you want to rely on your old stuff versus your new stuff, as it were. All right, and now we go back to these guys right here so that I can. These are little diamonds that basically grow right there. Right along the eye line, you can see them here. Let's see. Let's see. That it's almost all of it, that's right. But I think, yeah, right. I gotta do the stars. I gotta do the stars. Which come in two flavors. They come in this teal color and they come in this gold color that I'm using right now. Uh, it's automatic. Automatic it. Yep. Well, I mean, that's fine. But invert. And since we're here, we'll just like close the big set for now and we'll turn off the little wings and the body this hair but nothing else is really now I have a brush that I made for stars but it's too close together So you get star color like that, and then and oh, that was directly on the the color, which I didn't want to do. Specifically because I wanted to see if I could Let's see. See, that looks like glitter, but I'm trying to get it to look like stars. Which is part of the reason why I want to try 
Gaussian and then you're blurring it to see if that helps. It doesn't, not to me at least. Which, uh, that's why this is the hard part for me at least, because it's. What do you do? Do you. Do you just draw them in by hand? I'll show you why I don't like my the brush that I made. Um, it's very busy. But maybe it'll work better. Maybe after I keep this like this, we'll do like, like that. And then we take off the excess. Still doesn't look right, so I'm just going to not worry about it for now. I don't need it to do... Outfit design at the, at the offset anyway. I'll figure out a better brush for it. I'll figure it out myself, but... Like... This doesn't look right like galaxies either. The nebula brush doesn't work either. In case you were wondering. Alright. Doop 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 and group. And this is the whole entity. So it best be when you want to work on this. Let's see if we can find a good color that like stands out super bright against it. Yeah, the green works well. So... I wanted to emphasize championness, but I also felt like, as a person who enjoys dragons, that there wasn't enough uh, head stuff. Like, I wanted to add laurels, because I think that looks nice. So then we have, like, how do I want to define Kurota as a guardian figure? I at least want to sketch out one outfit before you guys leave, before I leave, because we're at, like, two hours. But I want to... to do it, to do an outfit. So, I want her to look championing, imposing. 
so let's see. Basically, like... We're gonna go Grecian on that. But that gives some sort of armor-esque feel there. Which I appreciate. Um... I just want it to, like, feel like she's a champion for a reason, you know? And the initial outfit was very, like, sage, wise person. Energy, not. Well. Kurota is naturally defense. I like the idea of arena fighting in this case for her as a gladiatorial sort of feeling. Entity. Something about that makes me smile. So. If we do that. Probably. Be best to bundle that up. But. I want. To leave the design. At least a little bit untouched. So, let's see. Freedom of movement. Uh, combat oriented entity. Like, this is bigger, this is flexible, this is not as flexible, but it is in these parts, so that the shoulders move. Next to pauldrons. Let's see, where else? I may just, like... Braids. Here. And just draw it in. 
as sort of like by erasing the, by adding the color of a background or whatever. to keep these these ideas that I enjoy you can weave spiky bits into braids that's a concept that's been used in one of my sister's favorite books uh to prevent them from using the tail as a grabbing point. And we just go ahead and wrap that up as best we can. Probably say that she's kind of utilitarian, doesn't mind tail bags. In fact, probably utilizes them for supplies and stuff. Uh, support. Just because I need to change the shape of that. Um, yeah. Basically, brain goes Roman, Roman-esque. Not necessarily Rome in its entirety but inspired by it because I feel like that's a fun just way to do things here. I enjoy that. Basically, leather, which I agree with for ease of movement, with some metal mixed in. Mainly because death from above, you never expect it. Nobody ever looks up. Okay, I guess there's one thing I want to try. Find a spot I like. And... Borrow a good chunk of it. Take this. Take it. I want to try something. Uh, 
Okay. Basically. That's what I want to try. I want to see if that looks any good. Because I've seen this on a couple of dragon designs and I think it looks nice. So we'll try it on mine. If it does, we'll keep it, and if it doesn't, we won't. Yes, I actually do like that quite a bit, so we'll leave that as a face marking. Yeah. And just so that I can sort of show you what I mean by she looked very sagey. When I initially got her, it was an outfit that looked like this. don't even remember what the clothes fully were off the top of my head. So we'll go here because we were in here. So that we can see. Yeah, see what I mean? Sagey. 
Not a bad look. But you can also tell where I... Where I've taken... Uh, the character is... No longer the same place as evidenced by my armor set. I did that just to make it darker. But that's what I get for for being... I'll do both of those. Those are both outfits that I'll do. I guess I'll do them at another time. Because I think I've run out of steam for today. But the character themselves looks great. So, thanks for joining me everybody on my my art stream i am really glad you showed up i'm really glad we talked and i am glad that you're back here with me um i hope you have a wonderful evening morning afternoon wherever you are in the world and that you'll join me next saturday at around noon ish so that i play minecraft with you guys um, until then, give me a follow if you like what I do, or support me on Ko-fi, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!